Okay, so I thought I'd give a little bit of an introduction about speed sketching and also a little bit of some of the things that have influenced me on how I've approached documenting things quickly. So um, I tend to carry around a notebook like this, which has a bunch of all sorts of different things going on. Um, and I think what I realized is that one of my biggest influences wasn't necessarily the big, so that especially this one, legendary sort of... Uh, sketching techniques book but it's actually this one I think has been one of the biggest influences in essentially choosing what is the least I can get away with so I am not any in any way a sort of skilled draftsman um, or artistic at all but what I find is that often I can communicate something quite quickly just by a post-it note and let's say today we're doing a video about a book I think you'd agree that looks pretty close to a book and maybe a couple more pages down there just for good measure. And we can draw a nice chunky designer arrow. So I gotta be honest, there's, you know, when you're in presentations or you're in a brainstorming session, you can do a lot worse than just crank out a post-it note. Incidentally, small tip, you don't take your post-it notes off that way take them off that way. That way they don't curl up. Anyway, post-it note lessons aside, this was the book that basically got me started and I actually bought this for, believe it or not, a bunch of chemical engineers who found it incredibly useful for taking better notes and documenting their process and being able to articulate themselves visually as well as just through spreadsheets and graphs. So what I wanted to point out was that this is really all about essentially seeing things, hearing things, thinking about it, and not trying to sketch every single thing that is, has happened in the moment, but actually to put the essentials down. And so I love this phrase that, um, this is, sorry, Mike Rhodes, sketch notes. And essentially he sort of basically says, these are visual maps and it helps you come back to information as well and remember exactly what you were thinking and processing at the time. And so I think the only way you can do this is not by creating oil paintings, but by creating efficient uh, sketch notes. And so he goes into sort of obviously showing a few other people's styles. And even though there's some really, uh, you know, this looks deceptively simple, but you know, obviously there's a lot of uh, skill in doing the line work um, all the way through to other artists you know, obviously getting faces and things like this. But I think the key point that he wants to make is there is no set style on how you do this. And uh, I actually had the pleasure of meeting uh, Eva, uh, who did an incredible uh, sketch notes class for us. And you can see that she's really very, very accomplished. But she spends a lot of time showing people, you know, this is how you draw a bike. And quite often people draw really wonky bikes. So it's one of those weird things that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to us. And her key point is sketching is not drawing. And I think this is one of the best things that she makes the point of. Um, this is still a bike and it's a darn sight quicker than trying to create that bike. Um, I think the other thing that I love that she does is she really doesn't come in with a ton of really, really fancy swanky pens and, you know, perfect sketch, uh, sketch pads. She can crank something out on a pencil or a biro and it's just as good as anyone else in the room. But of course, when you look at the full folio of her work, she's extremely accomplished as well. But I love the fact that she makes the point of how to just get things done. And this, you can see here, I love this little one of sort of dynamics of people that you can tell someone's leaning over and a bit curious and their, you know, heads high and they're bouncing along happily. And just even that simple thing of the orange rectangle being animated gives things a lot more dynamic. So I think what's really great about this book is it decodes some of the reasons why, uh, you know, sort of more advanced things, like for example, comics, in another book, cover that in a different review, why those things actually work. So I'd say this is really like a great, you know, this is the primer. And I think as well, before you get into things like understanding comics, even just understanding how information is laid out. Do you want to create linear things like this? Do you want to have them radiating out vertical only, wiggly paths, modular sections, or as, as, as uh, Mike calls it, popcorn all over the place? 
And so I think this just gives you a lot of different inspiration on how to do that. And again, there is no right or wrong. The point is, it's just how you want to do it. And I think even though he's obviously giving examples which are reasonably accomplished, you can see from this, this is not like high level sketching. This is very much getting it done. And I love the fact that, you know, he has the confidence to include people who are confident themselves like this. So again, uh, this is a really great trick that sometimes you're in meetings and get, dare I say it, you don't always have the ability to look up LinkedIn or whatever. Um, if you're in a meeting, I'm terrible at remembering names. And so I've actually come to quite often draw just little sketches of faces, you know, example of this down here, just honestly, just getting it done. So as you can see, really quite simple. And I think what I love is that he sort of breaks down how to do these things. So for example, this is how to just crank out face, eyes, mouth. And it's just, it's pretty memorable and you can tell who they were by very, very simple lines. So I really love his approach on this. Anyway, I'd say the crux of it really comes down to essentially these five elements, square, circle, line, triangle, dot. And he makes the point wonderfully of like how much stuff you can produce from these simple shapes. And I think often the, the, the difficult thing that people struggle with when they think they can't draw is it's kind of like saying, I can't play baseball. It's like, well, how many balls have you tried to hit with a baseball bat? And if it's none, then, well, of course you can't. And I think it's the same until you develop a muscle memory of drawing 20 of these houses almost on rote rep repetition. You, you just haven't got it in your hand to quickly think, oh yeah, that's how I do a quick iPhone. I don't even draw like... The, the thickness when I do this. I just draw pretty much a rectangle and then another rectangle and a dot at the bottom. That's my iPhone. My book, you've already seen how I do it. I do a couple more pages on that side. So I've developed my own sort of way of, of, of creating a shorthand. So it is like learning a visual alphabet. You need a few things which are your go-to illustrations. And whatever your industry is, I very rarely draw dogs, it turns out, in mechanical engineering but I do draw a lot of iPads and, and laptops and things like this and homes and whatever um, in user-centered design. So I think you'll naturally find you, you do develop that as you go. So again, nice little one on how to do type as well. And I think, again, uh, lettering isn't my strong point. My handwriting is ter terrible, but even if you do nothing, write in caps. Um, it's always more legible. So he gives a a little bit of help on just also how to create chunky lettering simply just by going over the same things two or three times and blocking it. And I think even simple tricks like that can make a huge difference. And then finally, just something that I've quite enjoyed is you blaze through some sketch notes and then go back just maybe on the bus or tube ride home with some colored pens or pencils and just highlight the bits that you realize in hindsight were the most interesting. So having some time to reflect on this. So even though this is primarily a review of Mike Rhodes' Sketch Notes, absolutely wonderful book, um, I thought I'd just make the point that this is not just Mike winging it and uh, no one actually does it in practice. This is another book that I've had for many years and I love this. This is Matthew Frederick, uh, 101 Things I Learned in Architecture School. He is an architect um, and he has all these really great little sort of provocations and bits of advice and as you can see, this is not, you know, sort of high art. This is exactly what Mike is talking about. And when you get nearer the beginning of the book where it's more about the principles, you can see he's just pretty much cranking out basic shapes. And of course, digital mixed with this is absolutely fine too. And you can see, here we go, just some little sketches. And I mean, that that's not impossible to draw for most people with a little bit of practice. And... I think again, he's, he's all about communicating the point. So this is about suburban buildings are freestanding objects in space, urban buildings are often shapers of space. And he's just making that point, I think, very adequately, just with those two little sketches, which didn't require a whole lot of, you know, illustrative skills. So it gets the job done. So I think this lives and breathes a lot of what's in this book. And then I think just to give a little bit of, should we say, latitude, um, this is a good friend of mine, uh, Tim King. Uh, this was actually part of his Kickstarter. 
of everyday story of 2016 and I mean boy did he choose a year to do this uh, little did he know how eventful 2016 would be and essentially what this is called uh, I believe the phrase is uh, reportage illustration which means sort of in the moment so drawn on real life and what's great is that Tim has done everything from drawn like beer bottles as you can see through to you know obviously quite accomplished sketching but then try and find an example usually one crops up yeah like beer mats just freestyling on a beer mat another beer mat there um, and quite often sort of mixed media like chopping things up and just going with the flow of it and I really love the fact that he's he's definitely a nice provocation to saying you've got to also do something that's you know very very you know one style or genre I mean I just think these are great just a, a used lollipop stick sketching on that and I think what what Tim sort of says is that quite often it's not that he thinks all of these are equally successful but sometimes the pleasure and, and, and sort of enjoyment he had from doing one thing led him to another idea and so I think quite often I, I feel that where sometimes these books um, or dare I say it especially books like this which I'll come on to another time they sort of encourage you to do sort of a sketch a day and when it's very technical and very dry and boring, it's quite hard to motivate yourself. And I think this is where Tim really, you know, taps into something. That if you set yourself a goal to just do a silly little doodle or squiggle, um, and I could just saw ones like that, like just squiggling in the baked bean sauce residue on his plate, I kind of feel that's the sort of stuff that is still legitimate visualisation and practice. So I really think this is a fun way to sort of break the preconceptions of what sketches are all about and why you do them do them as much for yourself and then it'll become more fun but understanding the the fundamentals of why information can be laid out simply and effectively and what it serves as as, as a function in your brain of taking notes and processing the important information and discarding the less important i gotta say i think mark uh, sorry mike has just been you know, an incredible inspiration and uh, sort of foundation to any sort of work I've done. So I couldn't recommend it highly enough. Hope that's useful.